Okay, in this problem, we want to verify the ground state solution of Schrodinger's equation for hydrogen. So the function looks like this. It's an R0 cubed in the denominator in that square root there. R0 looks like this. That C in the denominator is actually an E, the electron charge. Here that the Schrodinger equation looks like. Um, and what I want to do is I want to write it in spherical coordinates. It even mentions that in the book that it should be done. So I'm just going to do it. The thing in parentheses here is the Laplacian operator. It's easy enough to write that in spherical coordinates. Looks like this. Okay. Then my function psi doesn't depend on theta and phi. So I get to just cross those two terms off because their derivatives will just be zero. And then I'm going to multiply through by r0 squared times minus 2m over h bar squared. That way, but the coefficient of this first term is going to be r0 squared. Okay, then I'm going to change variables so that x is r over r0. It's basically a, it takes care of the dimensionality of r in a way. So I get an equation that looks like this. That's 2 over x, not 1. Then script E is um, some dimensionless kind of energy um, eigenvalue. But we can write it in terms of the actual energy E. One of the complications here is that this, for instance, is written in terms of h bar, but r0 is written in terms of h. So there's some factors of 2 pi floating around that we have to, we'll have to deal with. So here's what our psi looks like in terms of x. I'm going to leave the r0 squared in there. It actually doesn't make, it's actually r0 cubed. Like I said before, um, so here's the thing about it. That's just the normalization factor, n, which I'm just going to carry around. It's actually irrelevant to the rest of this problem. It's just a number. So there's the first derivative. And then we need to calculate this thing. Remember, this was, it's supposed to be x squared first derivative, but that's just 
minus n e to the minus x. Take that derivative. Okay. Let me substitute that back into the equation. which looks like this. So we calculate the left hand side, it just comes out to be n e to the minus x, which is minus our script e times n e to the minus x. Tells me that script e is minus one. And then we can use that to calculate the energy. Because we know what script E is in terms of E. Remember what I said about R0? It's got some H's in it. So we have to be careful about the fact that H bar is H over 2 pi. And this C squared, like I said before, that's actually E squared, the electron charge. And so the energy is the expression they give us there in the statement of the problem. There's our answer. So it worked out. Okay. One of the keys to doing this is um, getting rid of all of the dimensional quantities when we actually get down to the point of taking, trying to take derivatives and stuff. So the whole point of going to this x um, variable was to scale it so it's dimensionless because r0 is a length. Since so we take r, which is also a length over r0, we get just a, something that's dimensionless. And so e, script e is also dimensionless. Remember, it came out to be minus 1. And then we can use that to calculate capital E, the actual energy.